These are some of the small voices already being heard. Aboriginal executives in community organisations advising their boardrooms about issues affecting First Nations people. We're giving our Aboriginal staff a forum to be heard and then I feed back that information to our executive and our board who then, you know, can make informed decisions. Announce their support. This group of prominent NGOs, including Anglicare WA and Communicare, are backing the voice to parliament. Amid concerns there's a lack of understanding about what it is and how it would work, these executives say their roles are comparable small-scale examples. We have genuine and authentic partnerships with not only Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people at the local levels, in the regions and here in the city, it's also across other states. Of course, the voice has a few differences, including that it would operate independently of the bodies it advises. But some argue it wouldn't create any meaningful change and resources could be better invested elsewhere. The only thing that's going to make things work is by those people on the ground leading the way forward through heavy investment of resources to the right people to make those positive changes. Others believe it's a necessary step to address systemic disadvantages faced by First Nations Australians. For this to be a part of growth and opportunity for us to make this a better place for all of us so that we can walk and live and play as one on this beautiful country. Australians will decide for themselves whether the voice is necessary or not before the end of the year. Kaysen Ho, ABC News.